I started out as a gymnast when I was a year and a half old and then um, added dance and then added chorus and then um, by high school I was doing theater and it, it stayed pretty true on that path but um, but I, I was still doing some writing and, and as I've sort of shifted from chorus girl um, actor to director mentor <laughs> teacher um, I've taken on a lot more writing and directing and um, and mentoring roles and and I think this show is kind of a, of a reflection of that shift in my own life because um, I'm trying to take you know my life experiences and find the message for me and then set, see if that message resonates to other people. Can you tell us what the definition of a single married girl is because it does seem to be a contradiction? Well, that's sort of the point. Um, a single married girl is somebody who, uh, well in the context of this show it's someone who married very young um, and is, um, is not in an unhappy marriage but it's not a particularly satisfying marriage either. And a single married girl is somebody who realizes, you know, they're married to a friend, a roommate, um, but they're pretty much alone. They're the, they're not really married to a partner. Mm -hmm. And and the um, the show is all about is that enough? You know what what do you do when you get to that crossroads where you say, I guess this is just my life, and what happens if you say that's not enough? What do you do? <laughs> and the, the inspiration for the show came from a blog. Mm -hmm. But why did you choose that particular starting point for the show, the inspiration for the show? Was it personal experience or was it just something you thought would resonate with the audience? Yes. Um, well, it, um, the blog itself was written over about three, three and a half years, I think. And I, I wanted to create a show that was a little more linear, so I created a, a, a year-long timeline. But the blog is, is uh, written by Laurel Spears, which is a pen name of mine. So the story is, is very close to my own heart <laughs> because it is, it is my story. So when you perform the act afterwards, mm -hmm. do you get a response from the audience where they say, this, is, this was me, this is exactly me? Yes, and I did not know that that was going to be the response. I have, I have had people come up to me and say, how did you know to tell my life story? or how um, nobody is talking about this. Thank you so much. Nobody is talking about what this is like. And it hasn't just been women. I've had men come up to me and say, I had no idea I was a single married girl. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people that have come up to me and said, um, you know, because sort of the premise of the show is dating yourself to find your independence and, and you know, discover who you are and, and be that whole person. Cause I think we buy into that myth that said, you know, you need to find your soulmate, you need to find your other half. And the truth of the matter is, if you're looking for your other half, then you're only half a person. Uh, and you really shouldn't be married in the first place. <laughs> um, but I, th I think that's, it's a very universal truth. And, and we buy into this myth and all of a sudden we go, you know what, that is a catastrophe. <laughs> so how do you be a whole person? And I think that, particular theme is incredibly universal. I think it resonates on all levels with all genders and um, and that has been my discovery through doing this show that, that it it has a much more resonating truth than even I anticipated. So it's, it's a one woman show. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it to um, entertain the audience on your own on stage for the duration of the performance? Well it's <laughs> it's exhilarating and terrifying. Um, it's something that, that has taken me a while to get really comfortable with. Um, you know, I've been performing the show for about a year now. And when I first did it, um, I had to get used to the fact that sometimes, because the audience really is my, my second actor, you know, but I had to get used to the fact that sometimes I'm not going to be able to hear them, I'm not going to be able to see them, and I just have to... Uh, I just have to believe that they are an introverted friend <laughs> who just aren't very vocal. But you, you really are on your own too. You know, if, if anything goes awry, you just, you have to work it out, hmm. you know. Do you say that you 
use the audience as the second player in, in the piece. Mm -hmm. Is there any element of audience participation? There's not really audience participation. When I, when I say that they're the, second, they're the second character, it's because, as I said, it is based on a blog, and the blog is um, it's a direct address blog. And I really liked that about it. I mean, I liked the fact that, that it was speaking, that, that each blog entry is written to the writer as though they're a friend. I mean, written to the reader as though they're a friend. And so I kept that through line in the show. So everything in the show is, is written as a direct address. Like I'm, I'm telling, you know, like I'm having a, a chat with, with, with a friend. If people are looking through the program of events for Bed Fringe, why should they pick Single Married Girl over some of the other um, acts that are performing? Because they're going to walk away feeling great. Um, there is just something really intangible and quirky about this show. It's such an underdog story. It's a very funny story. Um, and it's funny because it's all about laughing at your own foibles and, and just being so comfortable in your own skin that you can go, ha, huh, I'm a mess and that's okay. And that's real. <laughs> and, um, and I think, I think everybody who comes to this show will walk away going, oh my gosh, I'm a mess too, and that's great. <laughs> I'm going to go out and take myself to a movie now. <laughs> so do you think, in a way, it's, it's kind of a therapy? I think it is. I mean, you know, obviously the, the writing aspect of it was, was cathartic, and I, I, I never envisioned, you know, in, in the beginning that this, that this would become a stage show, but the more I do it, the more I realize it is. It's like a big group therapy session where everybody goes, Oh, instead of feeling really bad about everything that's happened, they go, oh, I feel really great about it. <laughs> oh, now I should go out and write my own story. <laughs> have, have people actually said that they've been inspired to write their own stories? Um, they, I haven't had anyone tell me they've been inspired to write their own stories, although I do know two people did um, after seeing the show. But, but um, I have had several people tell me they were inspired to change their own stories, to... Um, to address things that maybe, you know, that, that, that they've been in a rut or, you know, sort of stagnant and, and said, now I feel like I, I have a place to start, you know, this, not to get off on a tangent, but um, one of my big frustrations over the years has been motivational speakers because you go, they come in and they make you feel really great, you know, and everybody feels like they're on top of the world and they can conquer anything. And then the next day they wake up and go, they forgot to tell me how. <laughs> oh, nah, I have no idea where to start. Whereas this is, this isn't necessarily like, hey, you can, you can change your life, but it is, if you want to, this is a starting point mm. right here. Just, just this, this little teeny tiny baby step, you know, and, and that step triggers another step, triggers another step. And all of a sudden you realize you are changed and you've really done nothing except learn how to enjoy your own life.